According to historians, the writer of the majority of the book of Proverbs was King Solomon. A few noteworthy facts about Solomon are as follows. Solomon was the child of David and Bathsheba, Bathsheba being the woman that David famously committed adultery with. As a young man, Solomon loved God, as the Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. This is in 1 Kings 3, verse 3. One night, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? When Solomon responded, he didn't ask for money and wealth. He didn't request land or to live a hundred years in good health. But rather, when God asked him what he wanted, he responded by saying, Give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. Solomon asked for wisdom. Now what's interesting is that God responded by saying, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before nor shall any like you arise after you. Solomon clearly had the touch of God on him because he was certainly a person who had extraordinary wisdom. Now with that said, what can we learn from the wisest man on earth? What advice, what teachings, what warnings did he give us in the book of Proverbs? What are some of the wise principles and warnings he gave us that may not always provoke positive thought or feeling, but can most definitely spare us from unnecessary hardships and pain? Well, let's take a look at what the amplified version of Proverbs 6, verse 16 to 19 says. These six things the Lord hates, indeed seven are repulsive to him. A proud look, the attitude that makes one overestimate oneself and discount others, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that creates wicked plans, feet that run swiftly to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, even half-truths, and one who spreads discord, rumors, among brothers. So let's unpack these in no particular order. God hates a heart that creates wicked plans, a heart that is always scheming, devising, and plotting evil. Now, what are some of the wicked plans that a person's heart can make? Well, a person's heart can sin. A person's heart can plan to sin. A person's heart can plan how to sin in such a way that other people won't know or see. Wicked plans in a person's heart could be to do with revenge, payback, belittling someone, or simply wishing evil against another person. These are the sorts of things God hates and certainly doesn't want to find in any of his children's hearts. Now, secondly, God hates pride. He hates those who undervalue others. Those who have pride will disregard other people and think that they are better than others. But the Bible is clear about this. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. A proud look is a person who wants their own personal will above the will of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that it was the sin of pride that got Lucifer cast out of heaven. And it's a sin that God does not stand for. So you and I need to make sure that our hearts are never filled with pride, but instead we are to remain as humble people. Now, the Bible also tells us that God hates a false witness who breathes out lies, even half-truths. In other words, God hates a lying tongue. And he hates a lying tongue because Jesus described the devil as the father, the father of lies. Therefore, anyone who is a liar is doing the devil's work. 
People of God, let me tell you that truth is a central element of the Christian walk. The Holy Spirit is described as the spirit of truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And if Christ dwells in us, if Christ lives in us, and if the Holy Spirit resides in us, if the Holy Spirit has sealed us, then surely we are to be true believers who seek the truth and speak the truth. Moving on. The Bible tells us that God hates the one who spreads discord, rumors, among brothers. Anyone who sows discord among God's children, anyone who instigates hate and harmful rumors or gossips, this person is an enemy of God. Overall, I want to tell you today to take heed of these warnings. Pay attention to this advice. We need to be more like Christ each and every day. Be found to be humble. Be found to have an attitude that seeks to serve instead of being served. Seek to exalt the name of Jesus Christ and not your own name. Be found to be loving to everyone, to every color, every social status. Love others with the love of Christ. Have compassion for others just like Christ. Minister to people by your actions. Pride is a dangerous thing. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, the Bible tells us that Lucifer in his heart said, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly in the remote parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Pride was found in the heart of Lucifer. The devil took the focus of God and put it all on himself. He stripped himself of humility. He threw away gratitude and became all about him. I will do this. I will do that. He said, I will five times all because he allowed the spirit of pride to take over his heart. Now I wonder, what if you started saying, I will too? Where have you changed the tune from God will to I will? Is it still God will provide for me? Or is it all about what you will do without a second thought about the Lord? What I'm trying to tell you is that pride is a dangerous enemy. It's an enemy that can so easily come into our heart if you're not careful. The Bible tells us clearly that pride goes before destruction. Hear me when I say this. Pride is a dangerous thing. It can be birthed in your heart, but be the very thing that will lead to your downfall. And the evil thing about pride is that it leads you to shame others. You go out of your way to show your wealth, your car, your house, it becomes all about you. Do you see the danger in that? If you're filled with pride, God will humble you. And you don't want the Lord to humble you because it's a painful process. So rather check your heart, humble yourself, or God will do it for you. Remember who you are. You are God's vessel. We are servants in the kingdom of God and it's a privilege to serve Jesus, the one true master. He is the good shepherd, and we are the sheep. He is the almighty father, and we are his sons and daughters. We're his children. He is the creator, and we are new creations in him. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. One of the most important keys to living a godly life is having an understanding of the nature of sin and the danger it poses to us as believers. How many of us have done something, achieved something, or completed something, and then looked back at our work with pride? Be honest. We have all, at some point in our lives, done something that we've been proud of, 
Something whereby you've stepped back and said, I did that. For some, they'll take pride in their gardens and in their homes. They'll make sure that no weeds are visible. The grass is expertly cut and always fed. Their homes are always neat with a fresh coat of paint every couple of years. And for others, their source of pride comes from achieving a career milestone like becoming the youngest director at their company. Others take pride in their uniform. They'll tell you, my granddad served in the army, my father served in the army, and now I'm following in their footsteps. You see, we all have something that we take pride in. But as believers, we have to acknowledge that there is a point where pride becomes something more than just an achievement or a family legacy. There is a point where pride becomes destructive and evil. And what I find interesting is that the Bible explicitly states in Proverbs 16, verse 5 of the Amplified Translation, Everyone who is proud and arrogant in heart is disgusting and exceedingly offensive to the Lord. Be assured, he will not go unpunished. Pride offends God. Other translations call it an abomination. Pride is dangerously deceptive because what it does is it turns the focus, the praise and adulation away from God and towards yourself. Pride is you saying, praise me, not God. Look at me, not God. Clap and cheer for me, not for the Lord. That's what pride does. You go from saying, it's by God's grace, to, I did it all by myself. I worked hard, and I did it. Think of it this way. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was humble. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the one with resurrection power. He was humble. The Bible says in Philippians 2, verse 5 to 7, Have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Jesus Christ gave up his divine privileges and took up the humble position of being born as a human being, also that we could be saved. Jesus demonstrated true humility. The Bible says, he emptied himself. He emptied himself of his glory and power so that he could be reduced to man, so that he could be at the same level as us and be born of a woman, all so he could save us. We have to follow the example that Christ set for us. The Bible in John chapter 13, verse 4 and 5 says, So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Verse 12 then says, When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. I want you to understand something. The disciples were there when Jesus turned water into wine. They were there when he cast out unclean spirits and delivered people from demons. The disciples saw Jesus walk on water. They heard him call out the name of a dead man, and that man, Lazarus, came out walking. The disciples witnessed the miracles of Jesus. They had no doubt that he could speak to the sea and wind and nature would obey. But yet this man, with such power, such divine anointing, a man with such authority was humble enough to wash their feet? This is, in my opinion, the greatest demonstration of humility. How many of us, if placed in positions of authority, would humble ourselves and serve others? Others who may not be as qualified as we are. Those who may not have as much money as we have. Those who didn't graduate with honor like we did. Dear friend, if you're listening, hear me clearly. If you find that you refuse to serve others because you don't see their value, 
then you are filled with pride because God values every human being. If you find that you're looking down on someone simply because of their social or economic status, then you are filled with pride because the love of God sees the soul, not the possessions. If you find that you are talking more about yourself than God, if it's all about what you have done, what you can do instead of what God has done and what God can do, then you are in danger. The spirit of pride is dangerous because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 16, verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. One of the telltale signs that destruction is around the corner is pride. When you see pride in your life, Know that destruction is coming if you do not go before God to be delivered of that spirit. Pride is to exalt or boast in oneself. You are effectively stripping God of the praise due to Him and taking it for yourself. Pride comes when we exalt ourselves and those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Isaiah 2 verse 12 says, For the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty, against all that is lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Don't wait for God to humble you. That will be a painful lesson. So I encourage you to really put Jesus Christ first. Biblical humility is not having low self-esteem. It's not you looking down on yourself or thinking that you're less than any other person. Biblical humility is serving the kingdom of God. It's serving the body of Christ. Biblical humility is living a life that seeks to do the will of God before your own will. The Lord has given us a model of how to act towards others, how to love others and treat others with godly care. Jesus set us an example, a blueprint on how we should be humble servants. I encourage you to set aside the spirit of pride if you find it present in your life.